Okay, today I thought we'd talk about building a volume control, a classic volume control. It's a passive, much like the uh, big old Ernie Ball indestructible boat anchor one. I mean, this thing's over 40 years old. You can drive a truck over it. Same circuit design, just in a case that you can 3D print. And uh, very smooth linear sound, meaning that the audio is uh, doesn't all happen in one place. It's very linear in its actions. One of the best, actually, that I have ever heard. And so let's get that out of the way. This is uh, the amplifier, so I'm going to plug that into the output jack. This would be from the guitar. Plug that in there. And we won't be playing anything. I'll just strum the guitar and then move the pedal. And you have to remember that uh, video cameras, unfortunately, have automatic gain controls. I don't really know how well it's going to show up changes in, in volume because it tries to bring the level up of low level things and compress the level of high level things. And Okay, strum the guitar. And I guess it would probably help if I had plugged everything in to both ends and the guitar, but I didn't. Very smooth, very nice action. So let's get that out of the way and let's talk about the build. And we might as well kill the amp so we don't have to listen to it buzz. Put the pick back in the guitar. Alright, so you can see the uh, top part you can print in the TPU or a flexible filament if you want to grab on the top. Of course, you could print the, the case out of any material you want. This is just PLA. And on the bottom, I put some anti-skid material like you'd put under a carpet or rug or in the shelves in your kitchen so that it won't slide around so that it grips. As far as the construction goes, let's move the camera over where you can uh, get the slideshow as per usual. Okay. So there's only a few parts to print. There's this main frame part. Prints with no supports. Actually, this side would be on, on the printer side. I'd already mounted the uh, two screw jacks in this picture. Here we are looking at it from the other side. So actually, now you're seeing it the position. My hand would be where the print bed would be. If you print in that direction, you don't have to use any supports. Got a couple of old vintage style uh, quarter inch jacks screwed in. This is showing the small pot that I used, and in my case, I just bought off of eBay a little case like this. It just contains all kinds of different values of trim pots and, and small potentiometers. It's very inexpensive, that way I can use it for all kinds of projects. In the case of wanting to imitate um, the vintage Ernie Ball type pedal, you're going to want to use a 250k potentiometer, which is what I have here. And I uh, have the one lead that's going to be ground and the case ground, both soldered together so that your case gets grounded. This is the next part we're going to print. We're looking at it from the bottom side here, but I'm showing where the potentiometer fits in and I tighten the nut. It's much easier to do all that when it's before we glue this piece onto the part you just saw. So here it is from the top view. These two get glued together. There's that large flange area across there. Just glue those two together. And again, I like to use the Weld On number 16 because it actually melts the PLA parts together. It's not a surface glue. They chemically are bonded. So here it is from the inside. Now we can see the two pots we talked, I mean the two jacks we talked about in the pot potentiometer there and I can start uh, doing the wiring. I had that one ground wire that you saw in that earlier picture and it'll go up to the two ground terminals there and that'll get that in there. And here I use different colored wires so that you could uh, see what's going on. So you have 
Um, this is the input jack, and this would be the plug, and this is where the connector is for it. So it comes all the way out to the outside. The ground is closest to the front. The center one just snakes around and comes over to that connection there. There's the uh, bottom plate, the anti-skid that I'm going to spray glue onto there. Here's the top side of the bottom plate. It does fit on there only in one direction. There's a, more space in the other. When you try to fit it on, you'll become obvious which is which. So there's that all screwed together. In reality, you want to hold off screwing the bottom plate on until we put the foot rocker on because we put a little bit of glue in the uh, quarter inch shaft that I use for the foot rocker to keep the shaft from moving. So the pictures are a little bit out of sequence. So you can see the bottom there. So here's the top foot rocker looking at from the inside. This uh, curved gear gets glued into here, pushed all the way back. Just put your glue on there and shove it in. It looks just like that when it's in place. And so here you can see I would have put it on, put a quarter inch shaft all the way through, and that way I can dab some glue down through this hole to keep that shaft from from moving. But if I ever wanted to get the shaft out, I could dig the glue out and then move the shaft. I haven't put the gear on the potentiometer yet because the easiest way to align these is to hold this all the way back like that and then position this gear out here to where it's just mating with the teeth and then push it onto the pot. Then you'll have a hundred percent full swing of the potentiometer. Yeah, it's just comparing the two in pictures. I think these are just beauty shots. Yeah, you already know what the thing looks like. So that's pretty much it. The files are going to be up on Thingiverse. Print yourself a, a nice volume pedal. And of course, obviously, if you don't uh, care for the vintage style of pedal, you could add a buff ramp to it and get a buffered output. That's real easy to do with an op amp. Or you could even design your own uh, wah pedal by putting a wah circuit in there. I think that's about it.